it's time to go. I got to get up out of here. <laughs> Alright, what's up everybody? It's your boy Jay Rod and welcome to the channel. So in case you haven't seen the title of this video, your boy's in Cali, Colombia. Yes, the Colombia, South America. That is where I'm at right now. Not the best place to be. Alright, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Why I'm leaving Cali, Colombia, and I'm probably not gonna return to Colombia until things get a little bit normal here. But um, yeah, so we're just gonna everything gonna be off the top of my head. I don't really have points. I'm just gonna talk to you about what's going on, so hopefully you can follow me. Cali, Colombia. Man, we got some talk. We got some stuff to talk about. So let's just talk about why I even ended up in Cali, all right? So the reason why I came is because somebody invited me to a party. I'm in a tribal group. They invited me to a Memorial Day weekend party, and they're like, hey, bro, come up to Colombia. Like, it's gonna be lit or whatever. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm gonna get the ticket. So that's how I ended up in Cali. Now, I did hear about some of the stuff that was going on with the protest, and, but I did not know it was countrywide. I really thought it was gonna be like just in Medellin or just like certain bigger cities. I didn't realize that it was throughout the entire Colombia. Like everybody in Colombia is going through some stuff right now, like with the government. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna kind of talk about today. Just my personal experience, the things I've been seeing here and why I just feel like, you know, it's better for me to just come back when things get a little bit normal. All right, so first impressions coming into Cali. Um, I was actually kind of nervous. I'm not gonna lie, like one of my homeboys, I got another homeboy. Um, he, had, he had texted me when I got on the plane. He was like, bro, don't go to Cali right now. And I'm like, well, it's kind of too late for that. <laughs> like I'm already on the plane, you know? So he was just telling me like, nah, like it's kind of dangerous and stuff like that. And then um, the day before that, I saw some stuff that was going on in Medellin. So, so a guy who follows me, he was posting some stuff on Instagram and it was like people rioting and looting and doing all that stuff. So But yeah, coming into Colombia, I came in with my guard up because I just already knew like things were gonna be a little bit crazy. Now, Cali itself visually is not the most appealing city. This is not your ideal vacation type of city that you would go to. We can kind of talk about like just my first impression. So like leaving the airport, it really felt like I was in the middle of nowhere. It was just like a bunch of farmland and grass for like miles and miles and miles. It was just like fields of grass. And I don't know if you've ever been through, anybody who drove through Atlanta, if you get outside of Atlanta, you keep south, you'll hit this area called Macon, Georgia. And that's exactly what it looked like. It looked like we was driving through Macon, Georgia, and just like a bunch of farmland and grass. It looked very country. So I was like, okay, like, you know, are we gonna get to the city? Eventually we did get to the city and um, Cali itself, once again, it ain't the most visually appealing to look at. Um, it kind of looks very industrial or I was getting industrial revolution type vibes from it. The sky was really, really dark and just very gloomy and it looked like an apocalypse. That's exactly what this reminds me of. It looks like an apocalypse. Like with all the chaos and madness that's going on with like the weather and just like it being in a city, that's exactly what this reminds me of. Or if you play Call of Duty, it reminds me of Call of Duty, like one of the maps in Call of Duty. Like, I don't know, it just looked very rough. But they said Cali is the salsa capital of the world. So there's definitely tons of culture here. But yeah, right now I'm in the hotel. I don't, they don't call it the SWAT team, but it was just like a bunch of police officers. They were like standing outside the hotel. So it definitely was intense seeing like all those police officers and stuff like when you were walking into the hotel. And the reason why it's been difficult to film here is because of the protest. So for those who don't know, when COVID happened, all the people was out of their jobs and um, basically the government ended up losing money. So the way that the government is trying to make up for that is they're taxing the people like crazy, but the salaries are really low in Colombia, so they can't afford that. So for that reason, the people, they're getting very angry and they're retaliating against the government. And you know, the police, they're actually abusing their power and they're becoming very violent against some of the protesters. And that was one of the things I was seeing on Instagram where they were saying like the police, they've just been like killing random people and stuff, you know, people who were innocent. More than a dozen people were reportedly killed in clashes in the Colombian city of Cali. UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet cited reports from Cali that armed individuals, including an off-duty police officer, had fired on demonstrators, journalists and passers-by. 
widespread protests that began late last month and have also affected other Colombian cities. They started with opposition to a now withdrawn tax reform proposal, but they've since broadened to demand a basic income, more opportunities for young people. So um, that's pretty much the kind of set the tone of like what's going on in Colombia or specifically Cali, Colombia right now. Like it's very tense because of all the stuff that's going on with the government and the people. Like for example, yesterday I went to the grocery store, okay? So as I walk to the grocery store, it's like all these people, everyone's just like walking really fast, like zoom, 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 zoom. Like people just trying to get to their destination and leave. Like nobody's really like mingling and talking. Like it's just kind of, everybody's moving very quickly. Got inside the grocery store, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an issue, but like on the streets, like nah, like it, everybody's like moving very fast. So I didn't even want to like pull out my camera or try to record anything. Cause like this, this is why the protests are really dangerous. Okay. so. It kind of puts you in the mind of last year, you know, last summer in the States when people was, you know, rioting and looting and stuff like that. See, the difference between Colombia and the United States is in the United States, you kind of typically knew where the protests were going to be. Like they had like a specific location in your city and you kind of knew when it was going to go down. Colombia is not really like that. Like it's just very sporadic. It's just, it can be at any given moment. So you don't really know what's going to happen on what block or what corner you go down. Like just some stuff can go down. So that's what makes it a little bit more dangerous than the protests that were going on in the United States. And then on top of that, with the added police brutality, you just don't know if you're gonna be a target. So for me to like be coming out in the streets with a camera, I just don't think it's the smartest decision. Like I had somebody told me, oh yeah, you should record and do all this stuff. I'm like, nah, like YouTube is not that serious. I'm not about to risk my life over some likes and views, bro. Like YouTube is not that deep. I promise you it's not that deep. Yeah, I forgot to mention like all the broken glass. So it was just glass like everywhere, like throughout the city. It's just tons of broken glass, tons of vandalism. And when we were coming in from the airport on our way to the hotel, there was like this car that was smoking. And you know, like when you see a smoking car, usually the next thing is it's going to explode. So I don't know if the car did explode, but, that, but yeah, that was going on. It was this car that was just smoking about to burst into flames. But um, yeah, so then later that night, when I got back to the hotel room, the whole night, gunshots. You could hear the gunshots going all the way up to like three, four o'clock in the morning. Like outside, like if you open the window in the hotel room, you could just hear the gunshots going off like the whole time. This is what I'm talking about. Bro, this is like in close proximity of where I'm staying. Like I said, the hotel is pretty much the safest place to be right now. And this actually is a very, very nice hotel. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick little rundown. So when you first walk in, you're going to see the mirror to the right. All right, and then to your left is the first bathroom. I guess it's like the guest bathroom. I already got the little walk-in shower, so I like that feature. Okay, it's pretty dope. All right, then you want to come out to this hallway. So this is the kitchen. So it got like the little fridge, and then you got the sink, and then you got a little stove right there, or like the stove top, microwave. All right, so then this is the living room. Pretty nice little space. And then got the little TV right there. All right, so when you keep walking to the back, this is the main bedroom, okay? What I like about this is you can see the pool right there and across from the pool is the mall. So that's the coolest feature about this hotel is it's connected directly to the mall. So I think that's pretty dope. That's another mirror right there. All right, then this is the main bathroom. This is my bathroom. All right, and then you got the tub right there with the shower. And then uh, I also got like another, you know, toilet seat right there. But yeah, this is a pretty nice little hotel. I like this. All right, so something else I forgot to mention is I had to get a COVID test. So I told the hotel that I was going out to the city to go get one, but they actually informed me not to go because it was too dangerous. They were saying, nah, like, don't go out to the city because of the riots and the protests. We'll send somebody to your room. So I thought that that was pretty nice that, you know, they were looking out for me to make sure that, you know, I was safe when I had to go get my test. So it is a pretty big suite and the people here are very, very professional and very helpful. So, you know, so I don't got nothing negative to say about the hotel. One thing I'll say that I like about this hotel is it's connected to the mall. So I don't really have to go out into the city if I need to go get some food or go to the ATM or whatever. Like everything is connected. So aside from like just seeing the people walk outside and yelling and rioting all night, I mean, Colombian people are really nice. Now, ain't nobody going to top Brazilians. I think Brazilians are probably like the best in Latin America. I still put Brazil as like 
one of the number one countries, if not the best country in South America. The Colombians are really chill. I don't got nothing negative to say about Colombians. I love their Spanish. Like their accents here are really, really easy to understand. So if you're somebody who is um, trying to learn Spanish, I would definitely recommend you learning Colombian Spanish because the accent is very neutral. You know, just hearing Colombians talk, they have a very, very good accent. This is probably my favorite accent in Latin America. But yeah, unfortunately, I am gonna be leaving Colombia because it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous to do content until things get back normal out here. Then maybe I'll come back and do some better content. Oh yeah, not to mention, I got another subscriber. He's in Cali, Colombia right now as well. And he couldn't even get back home because he was trying to book a flight. Or no, I think he was just trying to leave to go to a different part of Columbia, but yeah, but like the part of Cali, Columbia where he's in, put a barricade on the main road that you gotta take to get to the airport. So he can't even get to the airport, like he's stuck. So he said like they've been putting up like these barricades on like major roads and major highways, I guess to kind of keep people from entering the city. So that's another reason why I gotta leave Columbia because they're putting up barricades on the main highways that connect to the airport. So, you know, I'm not trying to get stuck here. Like I, I joked about being stuck in Brazil, but Colombia ain't trying to get stuck here right now. And then the president just announced that they're bringing in more police force to like control like what's going on with the protests and the riots and stuff. So yeah, yeah, this ain't the place to be right now, unfortunately. Literally the safest place is this hotel room. Like I'm not even joking. Okay, like you go outside into the street, it's just gonna be a bunch of people yelling and screaming and breaking shit. So it's like, no thank you. I'm not about to record and try to vlog. I ain't even want to attempt to record that. Like I'm not trying to get caught up in the crossfire. I'm probably gonna come back to Columbia next month when things die down because right now, you know, this is not really safe. But yeah, you already know what to do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Catch my next video. All right, deuces.